Hi guys, Evan Cole here, and in this second video of our Logging.net AWS CloudWatch series, we're going to be going through how we can configure Siri Log to log to AWS CloudWatch. In the previous video, we went through a rather low level demonstration of how we would use the AWS SDK to log to CloudWatch. But in most cases, you're probably going to be using one of the more popular logging libraries like Siri Log. And so in this video, we're going to go through how we can configure Siri Log to log to AWS CloudWatch. And this is especially useful if you already are using Serilog in an application and you want to update the application to log to CloudWatch. So let's get started. It's worth mentioning again, just like in the first video, there are some prerequisites. Obviously, you're going to need an AWS account. If you don't have one already, I'll leave a sign up link in the description below. Then I've also set up my AWS account as an AWS profile on my machine using the AWS CLI. And that makes it a lot easier because it means we don't have to worry about credentials and permissions while we're developing. And so if you haven't done that yet, I'll leave a link to the AWS CLI, which you can download and set up and you'll be good to go. All right, so for this example, we're going to be creating a .NET 6 console application. I'm going to call it AWS CloudWatch Logging with Serilog. Let's go and create that, .NET 6. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is install the Serilog NuGet package. So I'm going to do that now. Serilog, there we go, perfect, just this first one. And let's first set up a logger. And we're going to log to the console for now. So let's also install the serilog.syncs.console. And now we can go and start writing, just create a basic Serilog logger um, that we can then afterwards wire up to AWS CloudWatch. So let's go to our program and I'm just going to say using var log equals new logger configuration like that. And if we go control dot, it should there we go, using Serilog, and now we're good to go. So I'm just going to log everything, so minimum level, verbose, in Serilog, and then we're just going to write to the console for now. And let's create our logger like that, and let's log a few messages. So I'm going to log some verbose messages, writing in production message. That log dots and it's write an information message. Hi there, how are you? And let's write another verbose message and just say, yeah, we wrote the introduction message. Cool. So we've created a logger, we've set the minimum level to verbose, so we're literally going to be logging everything, and then we've logged a few messages. And if we run this now, make sure it doesn't open up somewhere else. All right, here we go. So if we run it, you'll see that it's now logged our messages and it said it's marked them as verbose or information. So that's great. We've set up a logger. We can log to the console. Let's go and set that up now to log to AWS CloudWatch. So to do that, we're going to add another NuGet package. And this is going to be serilog.syncs.aws CloudWatch, like that. All right, that's the one. Go and install that. It's gonna install a lot of stuff, accept it. All right, and let's go back to our program now. So now we have to do a bit more configuration for CloudWatch. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add another write to here. Let's go and say dot write to, and you should see we should get an AWS, what's it again? It's AWS uh, Amazon CloudWatch method like that. All right. If I go control dot, also, there we go. And we need to provide some configuration. So the first thing we're going to, if we go and look at the IntelliSense, we are going to, okay, it takes an option to object. I'm just going to use the parameters. So we have to provide a log group a log stream prefix and then there's a whole bunch of other options so let's go and 
configure the basics. So we're going to call this .NET Logging Demo Series Log. Then let's go and provide a log stream prefix. And in this case, we're just going to do the date time UTC now dot to string. I'm just going to use the current timestamp as the or well actually yeah as the logging as the prefix for our log streams in CloudWatch. And then we also you'll see we have we should provide a oh no, we don't have to. So if we just do it like that, that's fine. But what I do want to show you is I want to show you how to provide a CloudWatch client as well, because you might have to do that if you have to provide credentials. So we're going to say CloudWatch client. And in this case, we're just going to create a new Amazon CloudWatch logs. Is it that? Client. There we go. That's it. And we're just going to pass in a new instance. And then let's just end with that method. All right. And actually, you know what? I'm going to move this up here. I'm just going to call it bar client equals that and then just pass in here. So this should log to CloudWatch. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. So I have CloudWatch open here. Let's see. And it runs. And now if we go and look in our CloudWatch console over here, you'll see it's created a new log group. If we open that log group, You'll see here we have our Siri log or our log stream that Siri log created. And inside here we have the log messages from Siri log and it logs it in a JSON format. You can customize that. Um, but for now that's fine. All right. Then I just want to show you some of the other configuration options. So, so this is, we'll get you started, but I'm just going to go through some of the other configuration options and just briefly explain what they are. So we've provided a log group log stream prefix on a CloudWatch client. You can also specify the batch size. And so, or the batch size limit. And so remember how when we were logging with the AWS SDK, we could provide multiple log events per like put log events async method call. And so this batch size determines the maximum number of log events that should be sent in a batch to AWS CloudWatch. Then we also have, what else do we have? We have queue size. And the queue size is the maximum number of log events that should be kept in memory before we send it to CloudWatch. There's also batch upload period in seconds, which is the maximum length of time. So that's how long we're going to keep log events in the queue before we send them to CloudWatch. So even if the queue hasn't filled up, the queue size limit hasn't been reached, that's the maximum amount of time we're going to keep it in memory. And then there's a few others we can specify if we wanted to create a log group or not. Um, if the log group doesn't exist, Serilog is not going to try and create it. And so by default, it is going to try and create the log group, but you can change it to not. And then we can also change the log retention period. And so you'll see in AWS CloudWatch, AWS CloudWatch, it was a week, but we can change that. And so here it's a, we can go and choose different options here. So you can change the log retention period depending on your needs. And then you can also provide a text formatter. And so you saw it was in JSON, but you can provide a custom text formatter to format your log messages differently. And so those are just a few of the different configuration options. But as you can see, to get started with Serilog, it's not more than what that's like 10 lines of code to get Serilog to use CloudWatch, even less actually. And that's it. It's super simple, as you've seen now, to log from Serilog to AWS CloudWatch. And this is especially useful if you already have an application that uses Serilog. So if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions or anything. And I'll see you in the next one.